Hey guys, it's Roby from Dot Not Feather, and today we're going to give you a range report from shooting our Ruger LCP Custom. Um, you may have seen our earlier video where we kind of did an unboxing and a view of this LCP. Um, we did compare it to a Glock 42, and we finally got the chance to actually take it to the range and go ahead and give it a little couple rounds downrange to break it in and see how it functioned. I'll give you a view of the overall picture here of what this little pocket gun looks like. Okay, so this is the LCP Custom, uh, which indicates the raised sights, anodized red trigger, and a little bit of better trigger pull. Um, we've added, the only additions that we've done here is added the Hogue Handall Slip Over Cover Grip, uh, which gives it a little bit of better purchase in your hand. And this is the magazine with the pinky uh, extension here. So. Haven't really done much to it. Um, we broke it in with 100 rounds of ammunition, so just 100 rounds of ball ammo. Um, you can kind of see how it fits in my hand. Let me put that unloaded mag back in so that you can see. And this is probably the grip, you know, there's nowhere for your little pinky to go. So this is very similar to the grip that most of our viewers are going to see. Let's see how I shoot I end up stretching my thumb pretty far forward so be cognizant of this if you have larger hands don't don't get your thumbs or your fingers in front of the muzzle and when I shoot I've got both thumbs pointing in the direction that I'm aiming at uh, one kind of floats out in the air so this is pretty much what I'm looking looking at when I'm downrange and looking through the sights another view Okay, and so think about this size when you're thinking about a pocket pistol. Um, you don't really have a lot to go with. As you can see, I've got another quarter of my hand that's got nothing to do with this pistol, the frame. I've got no control on this, this portion right here. So basically controlling the gun with two fingers, the addition of my offhand and my thumb. So that's where we're at with this. Um, let me tell you a little bit about how the range report went. Uh, if you don't already know, the reason I do all these videos seated is because I broke my foot. So I've had surgery, haven't really been able to stand, can't put any weight on it for four months. So you'll always see me sitting down until it's summertime. That being said, um, we went to the range, shot 100 rounds of ball to get kind of get a feel for what it felt like and kind of break it in, make sure it was mechanically working, slide functions, um, you know, extractors, ejectors, all of that functioned. Um, and then after that, we shot. 40 rounds of Fiocchi um, defensive ammo. So 95 grain defensive ammo, uh, all worked without a hitch. Now I'll post a picture here for your, for your viewing and for general information about the type of ball ammo that we shot. Got it from Cheaper Than Dirt, um, which is here in Texas. And uh, actually wasn't too thrilled with the ammo itself. Um, it's foreign, it's some type of Russian ammo that's uh, similar to Tula and the other brands, Bear, Silver Bear, Silver Eagle, all the other uh, Russian commie stuff that you find that's really cheap. Um, but it was brass cased ammo and not steel cased, so figured, you know, for the price, it's bulk ammo, let's see what happens. Shot 100 rounds, and probably out of 100, we had 20 light loads. So what that means is 20 of the loads, um, however they were spread in the magazine or however they loaded up, were light, um, were not full power. So what we would first notice is that we would have failures to extract and failure, failures to load. So when you hit the soft or the low powdered round, you, your recoil was completely different. Uh, the impulse and just the feel in the gun itself, how it recoiled and how the slide reciprocated was completely um, subdued. It was just kind of, just didn't have the oomph that you'd expect. Um, and whether it could extract and inject that shell and pick up the next one was something to be seen. So out of that, um, out of those 20 light loads, Probably seven of them could extract um, and eject and allow the slide to pick up the next round, and the other 13 couldn't do that. So we'd have to go through our tap, rack, and bang um, failure mechanism and mode, um, you know, how you go about clearing a failure or a jam. So. Uh, that being said, all 20, I mean, all 100 rounds um, shot just with varying consistency. Um, and the 40 rounds after that of actual defensive ammo shot 100%. So we picked uh, seven yards as a t uh, test distance to sight this gun in and basically just give it its break in because anything past that 
um, is probably a stretch for me in my present condition. Uh, so I was basically shooting um, with my positive grip this way, thumb extended out. And as you can see, that's pretty much how I hold every firearm, um, every handgun. And so I was in this position with one leg on the ground and one leg tucked behind my leg. Um, the leg that's injured was basically tucked. And so I've got about 40% of the stability that I'm used to. So I'm kind of shooting peg-legged offhand a little bit and uh, kind of leaning and swaying a little back and forth. So that compromised some of my shooting. Aside from that though, the gun functioned flawlessly um, being the limitations of the bulk ammo. Um, it did everything I expected it to do. It does shoot, it, recy it cycles its uh, slide, it picks, picks up the next round, it ejects. Um, the only difference is they never designed this gun and the magazine's not designed to lock back open on the last round. So you will definitely know if you don't have a good trigger pull because that last round after you shoot that and the slide uh, cycles forward again, you're going to have basically the equivalent of shooting nothing or dry firing. So your last one is going to have you sitting here and pulling the trigger expecting a go bang and what you may end up just seeing is a whole bunch of slide movement down. Just you know, once once you basically make the trigger go, you're going to see the movement in your slide. And that's a good indication on something like this of what kind of trigger control you have. Being that this is about a six and a half pound double action pull, um, a lot of people have complained that you pull and pull and pull and you really just never know when it's going to go. Um, that is a good thing and a bad thing as far as training. Um, it will surprise you, but it's hard to expect, you know, when it's going to go bang. So you're going to have to really concentrate on your front sight, which is a problem for me with the stigmatism and things. So when I'm looking for a long trigger pull like this and I'm pulling and pulling and pulling, the front sight becomes blurry and I have to reacquire uh, my senses there, blink a few times and then I can reacquire sight picture and continue the motion. So. And that's what I'm seeing is front dot, front dot, front dot, blurry, blink, front dot, front dot, front dot, pull trigger. After that, um, after the first 100 rounds, uh, this thing was ticking pretty good. Um, aside from the limitations of the trigger, the other problem is that after you start shooting a pocket sized pistol gun like this, you are going to feel it in your hands. Your hands are going to be sore. You're going to get a lot of trigger slap out of this trigger. I don't know if it's just the way it's designed or the mechanism, but once you pull the trigger back, it's going to positively force you forward. So you're going to get a lot of trigger slap, which people that are very well accustomed to Max and some of these open bolt semi-autos um, or full autos know everything about that. You know, they're very familiar, but your finger is going to be sore. Um, but these guns weren't intended to shoot hundreds and hundreds of rounds. So they've got their primary mission and their primary mission is to be a small concealable pocket carry gun that you can pull out when you need and trust the reliability. So we kind of gave it a miniature torture test, shot a hundred rounds, shot the 40 amp rounds of defensive ammo. Um, during our range session, we came in at different times. So uh, I had to have a buddy of mine post my targets for me. So I'll show you, we didn't really keep a lot of the samples of the test targets, but we took two snippets and these are 20 rounds each of the Fiocchi defensive ammo. And uh, this is actually the first target. Um, this is all 20 rounds at seven yards, so 21 feet. As you can see, there's a couple, couple low flung ones, some flyers over here. Uh, a lot of this was basically just fatigue, kind of getting reacquiring sight picture, loading the mag, finger was getting tired at that point, but as you can see in this shoot and see, which is roughly a two and a half inch, almost three inch shooting C, um, there is 18 rounds that are touching it. So that was the first set of defensive ammo that I shot. We'll go ahead and look at the last target, which is the second box. And you can see that there's actually a couple more, about one, two, three, four low shots here. He's three, two, that's five. So there's five drops. Um, and this was more of an elevated target. It was probably in the six and a half foot range, kind of over my head. Um, and the position that I was using and the stability I had with just kind of hopping on one leg was kind of compromised. So a lot of times with that heavy trigger pull and not and being off balance, what I would end up doing is pulling the gun down inadvertently. But between the two targets, um, for this size of a pocket gun, I think that's pretty impressive. Um, generally not satisfied with this kind of accuracy at seven yards on a full-size gun, 
but given that I had half a hand to hold and half a leg to stand on, I think this is pretty impressive and you can definitely uh, carry this gun with confidence knowing that what you're aiming at is what you can hit. Well, that's about it for our Ruger LCP 380. It's proven its uh, worth. We're definitely going to carry it as a concealed uh, CCW handgun. Um, definitely have confidence in it and its function and how it worked. There's going to be a couple of YouTube videos that you see when you're looking up this gun, and you're going to see reliability issues, um, function issues, and just overall comfort issues. Uh, we didn't have anything to denote about that. We think that this is probably one of the best buys in an actual mouse gun like this, a uh, Pocket 380, which easily ships, easily um, fits in anybody's pocket. I mean, whether you're wearing jeans, slacks, uh, in a purse, this thing can drop in and go anywhere. So um, definitely something that you should consider uh, if you've got varying uh, wardrobes, things that dictate you can only wear certain clothing at certain times, stuff like that. But you can kind of see how easily concealable this handgun is. So. If you've got the right to carry, you might as well. The um, world's a dangerous place, so you're better off protecting yourself and or being prepared for the moment. So this is definitely a good carry gun to consider. Um, street price is probably around the 270 range for this model. Uh, check gun deals and some of the other web boards. You can find them a little bit cheaper, sometimes used, but definitely a good buy. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed our range report. Um, we'll try to put some shooting videos up and things when we get better. Um, but aside from that, if you got any questions, please leave any comments below. Uh, subscribe to the channel and let us know what you think and what you want us to review. Thanks a lot. This is Roby from Dot Not Feather, and have a good day.